Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. So when I say linear equations, by the way, a linear equation just refers to uh, the type of operations that are going on in the equation. So anytime you have something like, say, 3x plus 5 equals 19, this is a linear equation in one variable. There's no power. Well, there's an unwritten power of 1 on the x. Uh, no other powers, no x squared, no x cubed, nothing like that. And it only has one variable. So it's a linear equation in one variable. So today we're talking about linear equations in two variables, which would be something like 3x plus 5y equals 19. Both of the variables only have a power of 1. It's unwritten, but it's there. No squareds like we had in uh, circles. And so we'll see that this turns out to be a line. So the definition of a linear equation given in what's called standard form, just like circles had a standard form, lines have a standard form, is ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers. Any one of those could be zero, but it's never the case that both a and b are going to be zero, because in order to be a linear equation, it has to at least have a variable in it. Just like a solution to a linear equation in one variable is a single numerical answer, um, a so solution to a linear equation in two variables is actually an ordered pair. And so in order to indicate uh, which is the x number and which is the y number, we write it in parentheses and always have the x first and the y second. So I'm sure you've all seen this notation before. So for example, if we had 5 and 7 make the equation true, we would write 5, 7, and that's not equal to 7, 5. So that's why the order matters, and that's why we call it an ordered pair. Now, the thing about these linear equations in two variables is they have an infinite number of ordered pairs that make the equation true. We're going to find four solutions to this equation. We're going to plot them as points on an xy coordinate system, and then we're going to connect them in order to graph the line. Graph the line means um, basically giving a drawing that represents all of the solutions. We can't possibly list them all since there are an infinite number of solutions, but we can um, uh, represent the solutions on a graph. Okay, so. Anybody have an idea for a pair of numbers, just off the top of your head, a pair of numbers that you could plug in for x and y in that order and make this equation true? If you can think of one, just type the pair into the chat bar. Okay, so 2, 0 is a possibility. Good. Anybody think of any other? I'm going to jot that one down. So why is 2, 0 a solution? Because if you take 2 and plug in for x, 2, and plug in for y, 0, you get 2 times 2 plus 0 equals 4, which is 4 equals 4, which is true. Franco has another one there. He says 1, 2. Let's try that one. So we'd have 2 times 1 plus 2 equals 4, which means 4 equals 4, which is true. That's right. Okay, so we have two solutions. We need four of them all together. They're asking us to, to come up with four of them. Can anyone think of another pair that would work? Okay, 0, 4. Kaylee says 0, 4. That looks good. You'd have 2 times 0 plus 4 equals 4. So 4 equals 4, so that works. All right, we need one more. Anyone think of another pair that we haven't used already? 4, negative 4. Let's try that one. Thank you, Cordell. 4, negative 4. So we're going to have 2, 2 times 4 minus 4 equals 4. That means 8 minus 4 equals 4, which is true. Okay, so we have four pairs, four ordered pairs. In each case, the first coordinate, we call it, um, is the x, and the second coordinate is the y. <laughs> yes, you did. You did great. All right, so... Um, if you can imagine crossing two number lines, a single number line we can plot individual real numbers on. 
But if we cross two number lines, we get a grid where we can plot pairs of coordinates. So for example, the point two zero, um, if X is the horizontal axis, I'm not sure if you can see that, it's kind of tiny there. This is the X axis, this is the Y axis. Okay, X, we find the value for the first coordinate two along the X axis. The uh, second coordinate then is the Y value, which is zero, so we're not gonna go up or down at all. We're gonna just stay right here because zero is in the middle. So we would have the point here two zero. Okay, now let's plot one two. Now, by the way, as we <clears throat> work with graphs, one thing I have not mentioned, uh, just wanna remind you is that these quadrants have, uh, we would label them with Roman numerals one, two, three, and four. So in which quadrant would the point one, two appear? Very good, it'd be in quadrant one. We would go to one on the X and up to, okay, here we go. All right, zero, four is not actually in a quadrant. Where is that one located? Yeah, it's on the Y axis. All right, and four, negative four, which quadrant is that one in? Very good, quadrant four. Okay, so we've plotted those four, and now I'm going to connect them. Any solution to this linear equation in two variables is going to appear somewhere along this line. So we've graphed the line. Now, how many points does it take to determine a line? That's right, you need a minimum of two points. If you can get more, then that kind of reassures you that you were on the right track. Now, not all linear equations in two variables have two variables. I know that sounds weird. But if we're treating the equation y equals negative 3, for example, as a linear equation in two variables and graphing it in the xy coordinate system, the reason why we can think of it that way is we could think of it as 0x plus 1y equals negative 3. You see how it fits the pattern of ax plus by equals c? this uh, general form of a line. But one of the variables is missing because its coefficient was zero. What kind of a line are we gonna get when we graph y equals negative three? Does anyone know? So usually um, I've noticed that students, very good, horizontal. If you were a little unsure, unsure if it was horizontal or vertical, that's normal, it happens to everybody. What I always tell everyone is what this equation is telling you is that the y coordinates are always negative three. So if the y coordinates of any solutions are always negative three, and the x coordinates can be anything, I make a little xy chart and just list negative three a couple of times for y, and I let x be whatever I want. It could be negative five, it could be zero, it could be three, whatever I want. And then if you plot those points, you're gonna see that it in fact is a horizontal line. So negative five, three, for example, would be here in the second quadrant, zero, oops, it's supposed to be negative three, not three, my bad, let's go down. It's in the third quadrant, actually. Negative five, negative three down here. Uh, zero, negative three on the y-axis, and three, negative three. No matter which points you plot, if they all have y-coordinates of negative three, then they're going to form a horizontal line. Okay, and similarly, the line x equals 4, treating it as a uh, linear equation in two variables, that's just like the coefficient of y was 0. All right, so what's going to happen is the x value is always going to be 4, and it doesn't matter what y value you plug in. So again, just make a little xy chart. You know all your x coordinates are always going to be 4. And then y can be whatever you want. Okay, so maybe y is equal to uh, 2 or 0 or negative 1. Okay, so I've got 4, 2, 4, 0, and 4, negative 1. And then you can see that we're going to get a vertical line there. Anytime you have um, an equation of the form y equals a number, you get a horizontal line. And anytime you have an equation of the form x equals a number, it's going to be a vertical line. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.